Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this session, today we are going to see about uh, Appium, the new version that uh, the Appium team is has introduced, that is the 2.x or we call it as a beta version at this moment and um, if you would have uh, heard about this then the Appium actually nearly I think about uh, after five years actually they are changing from 1.x to 2.x it is still in beta version but then most of the features that you can definitely use it right away there are a couple of documentation that is available at the online and the from the Appium itself so I will be sharing all the documentation and the changes that are introduced into the Appium 2.x. Now the question comes, why do they really change the Appium from 1 to 2? What are the different changes they have added into this? And what is the main benefit of doing this? All these things we will be talking about that and I will show you the installation as well. Okay, so now talking about why actually the Appium made it from one to two actually so if you see that there are a couple of uh, uh, what do you call the introductions they have written and this document is still in in progress actually but uh, i will share this link so whenever you get some time you can just look into this now i will just talk about uh, a summary of why exactly this particular change is coming from ipm so this is basically to support the w3c protocol so if you would have heard about the appium architecture which we discussed before as well so it always uses the uh, the json while protocol like your selenium 3 so selenium 3 to 4 uh, also after a long duration actually they changed it to a different a new version and the main logic behind that was that it is the w3c protocol because all of your drivers the browser drivers they were all supporting the w3c and then there won't be any dependencies about the json wide protocol and it would be directly communicating with your drivers actually so that was the main intention and to have a standardized across different platforms Okay, so now by talking about the introducing the W3C protocol, they have done couple of changes and which is for the betterment of the Appium uses. Now the first change is that they have decoupled all the drivers actually, all the Appium drivers that you were seeing. Now what are the different drivers that we see normally? So there are a couple of drivers like you would have heard about the Android driver, iOS driver and then couple of more also the Appium was supporting. So before when you were installing, you simply go to your terminal and you will say npm install hyphen g Appium and you will be installed the Appium 1.x. But when you go to install the new latest version that is the 2.0 or they call it as Appium Next, then you have to install all the drivers that is required to automate your Android, iOS or any other devices. You need to install that separately. There are a couple of benefits that uh, these things can be modularized like whatever the changes they want independently each of those drivers they can do independently the next thing is that uh, they didn't want to actually combine all the drivers whether you need it or not so that is again another thing so in that case now let's try to understand how we can install the new appium version and then how to install the drivers then we will talk about the next changes for this actually I will be moving to the terminal okay and if you see I have just listed down couple of the documentation that kind of gives you an idea. So the first thing is that you have to use the npm install hyphen g that is globally you need to install and then it has to be appium at the rate next. So that's how they tagged it into the npm package. Okay now before to that the minimum node version the node.js that you have to install is the 12. I think the recent one is 17 or something. So if you are installing directly or upgrading then that shouldn't be a problem. Now let's try to install this one by using this command. So I'll move to the terminal and I'll just copy paste this one. The reason I'm making it the sudo so that it will help me to uh, take the permission from the uh, root level permissions. If you are on Windows, I think you don't really need. You can just start from the npm. And once I will be entering this command, it will ask me the password and this is your system password. So you can just give that which you need to authorize 
and once you authorize successfully then it will take some time and then it will install the Appium next. Actually, I have already installed this one. So now I was just showing you guys. Now to understand whether it is installed successfully or not, let's run this command appium-v. And then you can see that it gives me the latest version so far for the 2.0. Okay, so and then the path that it installed. But as I said that all the drivers are decoupled. So now the next thing is that we need to install the iOS let's say that first time installing the iOS driver that is nothing but your Xquit test so now what I'm going to do I'll copy this particular command and here let me just do a clear and then install this one now this is my Xquit test now again I have installed this so this shouldn't be taking a lot of time and as you can see that it is already saying that it is installed and I don't want to really update anything but then how do you know that it is installed properly? So for this actually there is a command and as you can see this is appium driver list. So appium driver list and you just run this command and you should see that all the drivers that I have installed. You can see that I have installed both Xquitest and UI Automator 2 and this is for iOS and this is for Android. And now these are other drivers that, has, that are already present for your IPM. But I did not really install those things. Let's say that you want to install the Safari driver or the Flutter driver. Then you can individually install by doing like this IPM driver install and then the name of the driver okay now let's uh, so there is something IPM doctor right you might have uh, already known about this I mean when you did for the first time now for this actually let me first try to install now in my case I have already installed and this is small actually it just capitalized automatically so you need to copy paste this one and then install it once you install that then you can use the appium doctor command to make sure that if your android driver or the ios driver that is properly installed with the required packages or not and for this what you need to do as you can see here there are different commands are available actually so here i will just say that now you see for android now let's say that i want to do for android so i can just do like this and then it will tell me okay i think it is double slash or double hyphen and you can see that it will be taking some time and it is diagnosing your system to make sure that all the required uh, what do you call uh, configurations or the setups are done to make sure that your IPM test should run on the Android simulator or real device and you can see that it is giving that all the requirements are met properly the same thing now let's run for iOS and see that if I'm good with my iOS automation or not and as you can see that it is all good the only thing it is telling that the cath is what's not found but I think somewhere it gives me that if you are using 1.22 or less then only the Kathis is required. Let me see that somewhere there was a note that I have seen already. So I'm just keeping that as it is. See Xcode is installed in my system. Xcode command line tools are installed. So when you install the Xcode for the first time and you open the Xcode it will install the necessary CLI commands so you don't really need to worry about that and then node is already installed there is no other things that is really required okay so everything is fine as you can see that there is not much issues are there so we are good with the Appium doctor as well okay now let's see that so I have um, now I have already told you right how to install all these things and then to get the driver list you can use that let's say that the Appium actually updated a new version actually okay and then how do you update it so there is a command actually Appium driver list and then updates so you have to copy paste this particular command and if you enter it it will give you the information and it is checking in my system whether or there is a update is required or not and as you can see because I recently updated it's telling that there is no other updates are required so you should be good to go 
fine so as you can see that all these things and now let me show you where exactly all these Appium drivers got installed. So if you go to your home folder, this is my home folder and then in Mac actually the hidden folders will not be displayed by default. You have to press the command, command key, shift and then greater than. Then you can access the hidden folders. Now you have to go to the .ipm folder from your home or root directory and as you can see here in the node modules it installed the two different drivers and these are all separated let's say i don't want to install the ipm i for ios then i can just skip this one so that is one of the benefit of that okay fine then now if you see that there are a couple of arguments that we have already used in our IPM, right? Let me show you that. So if you remember that, so these are the different IPM commands. See, how do you run your IPM? Okay, so that's the question, right? So you need to just uh, say IPM and then you just enter it from your command line and it takes the IPM, uh, what you call executable from this particular directory. And as you can see that it says that welcome to Appium beta and then it is running or listening to this local host 4723 port that that is only and it is giving couple of uh, details about that now there is a question that okay we have installed the IPM desktop so if you remember that uh, we were using the desktop version or there was a UI right where we were running our IPM server now actually the server the server GUI is not available if you want to run the apm 2.0 you have to rely on the command line argument only so that is one thing to note it okay so now because i have run my apm there are a couple of commands that we can run along with apm right and those commands or options whatever you call and these things are listed here so you can take the log level like if you want to have a debug info so that based on that you will be seeing those things and then there are a lot of other things that you can really keep it inside the apm along with the apm command now all these things are still valid actually but there is only one more i think the command that i have that they have added is something called as ah so when i looked into this actually so already the ipm uh, contributor actually have updated and i would highly recommend to follow this apmpro.com he normally updates all these things but if not you can just uh, keep watching these videos and then i will be updating as and when i'm getting more more information and if you go down actually there is a new command they introduced and that is something called as ah actually so th this is basically where you want to install all the drivers now at this moment by default it installed under my uh, the appium and then in this dot appium right let's say you don't want to install here you want to install in desktop or in some other for directory so you can use this ah command and then you have to give the path where you want to install this that's it okay appium home then it will take the automatically the dot appium folder and then a hyphen hyphen home means it will take your default so that is one thing to note okay so now there is something they have added that is called as plugins like if you go here and a little bit go down and you see something actually they have given something called as uh, driver updates yeah this actually i have already shown those things and then how do you update it let's say that there is a update available now you can run this command so appium driver update and then you can give actually list of commands so i'll just add it to the note as well so after this if you want to install something then you can just say like this okay you can install the latest version like this you can keep on adding it in one line and then it will take all the installation one by one now if you see that the protocol changes i've already said that they are now removing the json wire protocol and they are using the w3c protocol now this involves couple of changes the capabilities that we were using if you remember we were giving the device name and then the browser name or the bundle id app package there are a couple of small changes i will be taking a different uh, session for that so don't worry about that there is something called as plugins so now they have introduced now so if you go i don't know yeah th there is something called as plugins now these plugins are basically they are giving an option 
a customized option to the users or anybody who want to update actually these uh, drivers actually themselves so you can read actually a detailed way they have given so they're giving a ecosystem of the plugin where someone can really take the ipm uh, what do you call these drivers and they can modify certain things like let's say that you really want to add some functionality to the existing apis so you can use something so there is an example actually here a uh, plugin actually that is called as uh, apm image plugin so this is helpful for your images to deal with certain images so these things you can just go and look into that probably we can do a separate session for this but then uh, th this is some concept if you would have uh, heard about cypress uh, so they are giving actually some flexibility for the other users to pitch into that uh, i think even webdriver i uh, also have something called as plugins or the services where the third party services you can really use that so for you, it is basically a kind of a package that you need to install in terms of a plugin and then you can utilize their methods for your ease. So that is one thing. And then along with that, if you go to here, there are a couple of options also they have added, which is very much um, what do you call helpful for the cloud service providers like your uh, browser stack, source labs and uh, like test object so these things they are giving couple of things and they like apm options right they call it as cloud options i will show you when we were we will be running our test cases in there so i think these are a couple of changes they have added it and then which will help you to what do you call to think about what whether you want to really move it or not but then the best uh, suggestion they are giving is that because it is it is already moved to the w3c protocol it is easy where you have some kind of standardization across different platforms and your devices so that is why it is recommended okay so i think that's pretty much it about the appium uh, what do you call appium 2.0 and then as and when i will be getting some more uh, what do you call updates into this i will definitely keep adding to this okay hope this session is helpful stay tuned we will be seeing some more interesting topics about appium in this series uh, in the migration series like we have migrated from appium 1 to 2 now the next thing that i am going to showcase you that the appium java client 8 so if you are already into the appium java so you would have known that the previous version was a 7.x but in couple of months they have changed into the 8 and there are a couple of changes actually that is present there i will be listing down those things in our upcoming session and will take our existing framework and we'll show you what are the different changes it needed to run the our existing framework which we have created before so stay tuned and do subscribe to this youtube channel thank you for watching